The following video was created upon request, with the goal of spreading a message to the Filipino population, especially to those who still do not know the truth about their history. This continues till this day due to generations of North American ideological influences. It's worth mentioning that the Philippines designated English as an official language to downplay its Spanish history. As of today, families with greater purchasing power encourage the use of English more than that of the Philippine languages, causing more and more youth to lose their Filipino fluency. Therefore, these influences distance us from being able to successfully bridge Filipinos and Hispanics. It's crucial that we let our Filipino siblings know that they share a ton in common with Hispanics, more so than Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Despite the fact that in just 50 years, North Americans have managed to erase three centuries of shared history, the content of this video will be available in both English and Spanish, with the aim of achieving greater dissemination, especially within the Hispanic community. The main figure of the following video is that of the Philippine general, Emilio Aguinaldo, who was the president of the First Republic of the Philippines and the most visible head of the independence movement against the Spanish crown who believed that with the intervention of the United States, the Philippines could solidify their independence by accepting American aid. However, far from reality, since after the end of the Spanish-Philippine War, the United States invaded the country, giving rise to a Philippine-American War, which Emilio Aguinaldo himself would lead. After losing the war, the Philippines would become a colony of the United States until after the Japanese invasion of World War II. The Philippines would achieve its independence from the United States in 1946. During the period of U.S. occupation, Aguinaldo remained linked to independence movements, so he was never positively seen by U.S. sympathizers, who, thanks to the work of different authors and politicians, managed to paint the Philippine general as a murderer and a traitor, a perception that still persists till this day. Among the majority of the Philippine population, Emilio Aguinaldo is still seen in this light. The general who was once the main architect of the Philippine independence from the Spanish crown. This video will be reproduced with the help of artificial intelligence, an interview that the Filipino journalist Guillermo Gomez Rivera held with Emilio Aguinaldo and his wife Doña Maria Agoncillo at their home in Cavite on December 16, 1958. Mrs. Maria Agoncillo de Aguinaldo allowed Gomez Rivera to enter her mansion after having been informed that he was arriving with the purpose of interviewing her about her knowledge and her opinion on the national dress of the Philippines. In the middle of the interview, Emilio Aguinaldo intervened and unexpectedly, it was he who would be interviewed. Gomez Rivera did not publish this interview at the time because his family asked him not to do so. Since the interview was conducted only a few years after the independence of the Philippines from the United States and its content could have been considered as highly compromising. Now there exist other winds of freedom in the Asian country. The 86-year-old veteran journalist considered that the time had come to publish it in order to expose many historical errors about President Aguinaldo and the Philippine nation. In the book, True Version of the Philippine Revolution, Emilio Aguinaldo details some of the events that are discussed during this interview. This book can be read and downloaded for free from the Project Gutenberg portal. I'll leave the link in the video description. The following is that interview. Ma'am. In view of the controversy in the newspapers about Filipino national dress as it is now made by corcheteers or dressmakers, what would you say? That the national dress without its scarf or almapay on the shoulder ceases to be Filipino. Ma'am, are you against its modernization? The national costume of the Philippines should be respected. The form should not be destroyed. Costumes with its influence may be made, but this should not change how the national costume of the Filipino woman appears. It is good that this young man still speaks Spanish. What about the national dress? Mr. President, Your Excellence, yours truly represents some folk groups and your spouse just said that the Filipino national dress must be respected. This is how it should be. Today, here nothing is respected anymore. 
It is not my habit to criticize, but since you can understand me in Spanish, I tell you that I, Mr. Aguinaldo, is very sorry for what is now happening in this country, for which we, veterans of the Republic that began in 1896, have made so many sacrifices. Yes, Your Excellence, I revere you as one of our heroes and fathers of our nation. Some American history professors from the University of the Philippines came here to interview me. One of them is a certain Agoncillo, who claims to be a relative of my wife. He came here and talked to me in English. Then I had to signal him to speak in Tagalog because I knew he understands very little Spanish. Have you read the history of the Philippines that he wrote? Have you read the biography of Andres Bonifacio that he wrote? I haven't read those books, but I'm going to read them to find out what they say. I don't read in English, but some acquaintances have told me that these are not pro-Filipino books. I believe those books tell lies about me. What bad things can they say about your excellence? Well, what American politicians want. I ordered the assassination of Andres Bonifacio, and that is not true. I had my differences with Andres Bonifacio, but these new events want people to have a bad image of me, while the abuses and cruelties committed by the Americans are unfairly being covered up to justify their invasions and bloody annexation of the Philippines. I'm sorry to hear these words from Your Excellency, but I'm and Your Excellency's disposal to defend you and make known the true history of our country. That's it, the true history of our country, particularly the true history of our revolution against Spain, and our war of resistance against the American invaders who even today are still watching me in my own country. Your Excellency has a loyal follower, one more soldier, on this, your servant. Could Your Excellency summarize for me the history of the revolution against Spain? In short, under Spain, we are not economically controlled like we are now. That is why, when we learn from the Spanish liberals what freedom, equality, and fraternity are, we embrace Freemasonry, and we all adhere to the Grand Orient of Spain. I'm talking to you about Freemasonry because I knew the Gomez, the Ilo brothers, Felipe, and Guillermo, who are members of our Freemasonry. Yes, Your Excellency. I'm the grandson of Don Felipe and great-nephew of Don Guillermo. I have met and read about them in Semana Magazine and in The Voice of Manila and other Manila newspapers. That is why I speak to you very frankly, because I'm already fed up with that they have done to my poor country, our country, our homeland. And what bothers me the most is that they distort the history of our revolution and history of the resistance war against Americans, against the United States of America. Those historians who write our history in American English come here to interview me and they even make me sign things. But nothing I say is published when what I declare is not in accordance with the agenda of the American invaders. They are a bunch of shameless. What is the truth, Your Excellency? The beginning of the Philippine Revolution is a work of Freemasonry. But... That revolution ended with the pack of Biak Nabato. The Filipino volunteers helped the Spanish government here to almost defeat me. For this reason, I decided to sign the peace through the pack of Biak Nabato and decide to self-exile in Hong Kong. And why did the war against the Americans happen? Simply because the Americans cheated me. They approached me as Freemason brothers urging me in the name of international Freemasonry to come back to the Philippines so reorganize the revolution against Spain, giving their word as Freemason brothers that once the Spanish government in our island will be eliminated, they would grant us the independence for which we fought. Have the Americans not kept their word as a brother Masons to give you and our people their freedom? None of that. Read the local defense board that we signed by Apolinario Mabini. 
I have asked Deputy Don Miguel Cuenco of Cebu to publish in the text for the teaching of Spanish that decree the proclamation that we issued. The local defense boards, for this reason, upon arriving in the Philippines, I immediately declared the independence of the Philippines from Spain, hoping that the Americans would support us. But they betrayed me. They betrayed us. Instead of supporting us as allies, they deliberately provoke us into war very intentionally because their purpose was to rob us of the gold and silver reserves that we accumulated in Malolos under the custody of General Antonio Luna and Captain Serviliano Sevilla. That reserve is worth more than a billion dollars and it was stolen from us when Malolos was defeated by Arthur MacArthur. And they followed me to Palanan, Isabella to capture me. They didn't dare to execute me because it was not convenient for them to do so. They want me alive in order to blame me for the murder of Andres Bonifacio and Antonio Luna. How did the Americans manage to intervene in these murders, Your Excellency? They are very cunning. By using Freemasonry and money, they paid some of our men. Yes, they paid. Intimidated and threatened to make these people, who supposedly were under my command, to assassinate Andres and Procopio Bonifacio after an alleged trial of only one day long and they were sentenced to death. I didn't want to confirm that sentence but they forced me with threats even against my family. And here now, I'm suffering because they point at me as the one who killed Bonifacio. And what about General Antonio Luna? The same. They manipulated me and set everything up for me in Cabanatuan and then they blame me. They killed General Antonio Luna as well as Andres Bonifacio in the Masonic way with bladed weapons. That is why I, in my interior, have announced Freemasonry because today's Freemasonry belongs to the exploiting empire of the Americans. My General, Your Excellency, this truth must be published. That is precisely why I'm telling you now, because you will be the one who will make it public in the future so that our people know their true history. Do you regret anything that you have done in your life? Yes, I largely regret having risen up against Spain and then that is why when they celebrated in Manila the funeral for King Alfonso of Spain, I appeared at the cathedral to the surprise of the Spanish people. And then they asked me why I had come to the funeral of the king of Spain, against whom I rose up in rebellion. And I told them that he is still my king because under Spain, we are always Spanish subjects for citizens. But now, under the United States, we are just market of consumers for their sports. When not Parias, because they have never made the citizens of any state of the United States, and the Spanish made way for me and treated me as their brother on that significant day. Your Excellency, what can you tell us about the future of our country? At this point at my age, I think that the Philippines will remain a colony of the United States because the campaign of forcing the English language on our children is relentless and leads to the Filipinization of our future generations. Even more so, because they lose the necessary knowledge of the Spanish language, which is official Tagalog of our First Republic. Are you at peace with yourself, Your Excellency? Yes, I have returned to my religion, the one which we inherited as Spanish subjects. And like the old soldier that I am, I will slowly pass away to a better life with a clear conscience, with nothing more than the satisfaction of having honestly served my country with my possibilities and despite limitations. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you.